two, two, test, check, check, test, one, one, two, one, two, test, test, one, two, check, 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 one, two, test, test, one, two, check, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, check, one, two, one, two, one, two, check, check, one, two, Check one, two, 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 check one, two, one, two. This mic check can be a song if you let it find its word. Hi. Welcome. I'm not saying you're going to get to that level right there in just one or two lessons. But what I'm saying is we can find the music in us all if we just try. Off, not bad. Eh, I was close. I think I was relatively close, but you know. To each his own. Great thing is there are some very easy tips for playing this uh, cutar, as they call it, in the biz. I want you to see what I just did. I want you to see what I just did. What we have here is called a G chord. Clearly, you can see what my fingers are doing right here. No, I'm JK. Um, look it up on the internet. Point is, once you figure out A chord, not like the letter A, that's a different chord. It's even easier. It's a little more accurate. Point is, you give yourself a starting place, and this is true with any music. You give yourself a starting place, and you'll very quickly realize that it's easy to get from point A to point B relatively quickly. And right off the bat, you've made this progress that you can hear. And um, I guess the best way I can explain that is it, it's a twofold thing. One, it, it feels like you just unlocked this new secret ability. Like, oh my God, it, it, th this always seems so you know, insurmountable. And now I just did this. Um, so it gives you this confidence. And the second thing is it gives you confidence. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example of my first moment of that with guitar. Um, uh, this was back before many people were born. It was like in, it was in the 90s. And, um, which is really embarrassing to say because I really haven't progressed that much since the 90s. I've been busy. I've been doing things. Making stuff. Point is, um, there was this band back then called Nirvana. And they had this uh, this song, Come As You Are. And and I hear on the radio, it sounded really busy. Where the hell is my guitar picks? All right, here's something to keep you busy while I get some guitar picks. Okay, I'm back. I like living on the edge to where, in the same case, you know, you've got guitar picks mixed in, mixed in with like pins and, and, and brooches of some sort, and and emo pins that your wife had when she was a teenager, and they're gonna poke you. And there's stupid no-name bands called Candle Fuse. Back in my day, we had Candle Box. Both of those references are probably lost on everyone. Point is, guitar pick. See the difference it just made? Guitar pick. All right. This, this Nirvana band, as they called it, they had this Come As You Are song that was popular on 
Another thing we had by then called a radio, which is not really known these days. And it sounded just like this really, really complex thing that uh, Mr. Cobain was playing. But all it was was consisted of two strings, like these two guys right here. And all I'm going to do is be using one finger. Now you can see it. It's the second, the second guitar fret, as they call it. Any of you people who are stupid at guitar, these are called frets. These little places that look like you could put a penis in them. And, um, and no one really knows how many frets are on a guitar. That's not important. What's important is this, this whole main part of this song consists of two strings and work on two frets. That's it. And different combinations of this and this play that song. Like, for instance. See right here? That's when I was like, I did it. 20, I, not 33% of the way there to playing guitar. Done. Done. It gives you this, like, I would recommend find some form of music you like. Find an instrument that seems fun to you. Maybe it's the, the harpsichord or the, um, the drop the bass machine. Like, whatever it is, find a song Really, any song on the radio is probably pretty easy to play. It's always been like that. I'm not like knocking today's music or something. God, that is so old fogety. Point is, find a song. I would recommend Ramones because that shit really is easy. Like I ain't lying. Like they, they knew like four chords, tops. Find a song you like. You'll see that you can learn the basics of it a lot faster than you think you can. That's gonna build confidence. I mean, people are making money off this. Um, you look at these. Uh, okay, w the point I'm going to get at. I'm not. I'm just not going to beat around the bush on it. Uh, the, there's a game called Rocksmith. You can actually plug a physical guitar into it. If that's your thing, it, it's like. I mean, it's real life rock band. It actually does work. Frankly, it kind of sucks at the beginning <laughs> trying to figure out how to play it. They've made it better in the new version, but. The, the problem was is you realize how far you have to go. and um, But it does a good job now of like baby steps and before long like starting you off with something easy, kind of like what I was just playing, but it's Paint It Black by Rolling Stones. Like, that is incredibly simplistic in, in its most basic form. It gives you this confidence. And this can be applied to whatever. I mean, we're talking about guitar right now. It works with any instrument. And not only that, I mean, it works with flipping painting. I guarantee you, your first day of painting, you can paint a Jackson Pollock. We all can. That's the great thing about Jackson Pollock. And the thing that makes me realize I can't understand art. Because, um, you know, just watch my five-year-old could paint that. It's a documentary. It used to be on Netflix. Maybe it still is. It, it kind of sums it up pretty nicely. Anywho, I thought it would be best tonight... To just show you the possibilities that music, um, the doors that it can open, the ways it can connect us, the ways it can inspire. And um, I find a lot of times that we're touched, not just by adults, but by some of the most other odd sources, like... The Very Hungry Caterpillar, which I've been thinking really um, intently about this book for about the past 10 seconds, and already some, I don't even know how to, inspiration, if I had to make up a word, has come to mind. Um, what this book says to me, I mean, let's compare this um, 
with some Maroon 5 lyrics. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop, 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 pop. Out of the egg came a tiny, very hungry caterpillar. This is probably where we'd go into the chorus. Yeah, probably pre-chorus. That's another thing about st song structure. You have to expect there's going to be... You know, they're going to set you up with a little taste of the hook at the beginning. Or they're going to they're gonna build you up a little. Then you're going to, you're going to, you're going to verse it. You know, like, let's look at the, the coiveture of this guitar right here. Angles don't help. God, it's all backwards. But you know, like, um, now this is just a shitty example. First chorus. Chorus goes up, it gets big. Then you go to the butt. Now over here you need a bridge somewhere, as they call it in musical terms. Point is you have usually, I mean, count it out. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, chorus. Oh, then you've got this new magical section. We call that the bridge. The reason they call that the bridge is because it's bridging the gap between that second set of choruses and then this very last chorus that's what we like to call, by we, I mean I, I like to call it the balls to the wall chorus. And that's where we, we really, as they say in the biz, go big or go home. So, right here at this point in the Very Hungry Caterpillar, we are now at the pre-chorus. Once again, let's review the first verse. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop, 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 pop. Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. That's um, it's probably about the best Adam, Adam Levine impression I've heard. Okay, the pre-chorus, it's gonna it's gonna take uh, the same amount of words in like a Maroon Five case. It's gonna just it's gonna slow him down a little bit, like just say him a little bit slower. So this is only gonna be one sentence, like maybe a, a third of what the verse was, but it would be like. He started to look for some food. And then we're going to go into the, the chorus at that point. So let's go back one more time. Because all it was was on, on Sunday he started to look for some food. And that again, that was our pre-chorus. So maybe our intro would be this, this first page right here. In the light of the moon, a little leg lay on a leaf. And then they're going to build it up to the verse. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up. And pop, 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 pop. Out of the egg came a shiny, not shiny, a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. Pre-chorus. He started to look for some food. This is where auto tune would happen. Food. Here we go. Now we're at the the meat and potatoes, or is the fruit, depending on what the book is, of what I like to call the song structure. You know, this is our big hook. This is going to be the big chorus, and that's that's the reason they call it the pre-chorus. Before it's pre, previous to the chorus, it's leading in. He started to look for some food. Ooh, that's auto tune. Ooh. On Monday he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, turn the page. On Thursday he ate through four, four strawberries. But he was still hungry. E e e e e e e e e e e. Boom. See, and now we've gone through the chorus. I've still got a Friday here and a Saturday, but you know what? I'm saving those because we're gonna whip those out on the the second chorus. A little easier for you to see. Yep. See. We're not telling any. Uh, uh, sorry for the flicking. We're not telling anyone yet about our oranges because we still have another verse to go through. So now 
Let's see the rest of what our producers have given us. Mm. See, this is... Um, we're going to have to play jazz with this. You know what? We're going to go to what the producers given us. We could have done this one of two ways. If, if this was a standard Maroon 5 song, we could have a guest, uh, a guest rapper, potentially in the second verse, throwing down some 16s. And there are a lot of sentences here. And he could get through those pretty fast. Like He could rail through these. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hint at the ending suggestion that we're getting to, which is that the caterpillar is getting big and fat. Now, if you've ever read The Very Hungry Caterpillar, you'll know ultimately he eats a shit ton of food. That way he turns, uh, you know, he, he, he hibernates or whatever bird caterpillars do, and they turn into a butterfly. But um, the final scene is about him getting fat. Now, we've already alluded to that in the first verse because, well, not first verse, but, I mean, that just set up the whole thing, but in the first chorus, you know, because that, that, that's our whole refrain. He ate through this stuff, but he was still hungry. That's probably at the point of this song is still hungry, is what I'm thinking. So, what we need to do is we need to reference the fact that he's becoming fat. And that's going to um, that's going to be our second verse. Because then that will really take us back into our chorus. We can finish up Friday and Saturday as the second half of the chorus. And then we're going to go into the the bridge of the song where we can talk about him building the cocoon. Then we're going to one more time go back into the he was still hungry part. And then we're going to go into our refrain where we're, we're going to finish this up really big with him being a beautiful butterfly. So let us see. After... On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar. 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 See, sometimes you can say caterpillar, and it makes sense. Uh, an example of this: um, uh, Michael Jackson, Billie Jean. The chid is not my son. I'm thinking he either meant child or kid, but he's a Michael Jackson. You're recording. The chid is not my son. Michael, I love it. It's gold. Oh, you think so? Yeah, do it again two more times because we've got another chorus and then we've got a refrain. Then we're going to loop them the rest of the way. And then you're going to hear it for the next, uh, what What do you think, 25 years till he died? I don't know. Rough guesstimate. Anyway, still hungry. Um, that's that's pretty much the basic gist. What, what's really important after after the last... After the last chorus, because the last chorus is going to go into just really in-depth talking about... I think the bridge is where it's going to come down. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through an ice cream leaf. And after that, he felt much better. When he's feeling better, we need to... We need to that, that's word painting. Or the way we're going to do word painting is through our music going up. He feels much better. <laughs> Bass drops. Bass drops right there. We go back into the last ch chorus. Uh, which is going to involve building the small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. He then nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and... <laughs> Everything fades out except the keys. They hit that last note. The bass is still humming. The cymbals are coming down. No more drums are hit. 
The guitar maybe is still fading. Everything is fading away for then Adam's sweet voice to say, He was a beautiful butterfly. You've been listening at 104.7, the cock. I mean, you can just write these things daily. If you're Maroon 5, you do. Look, they have a lot of hits. Um, tip, pro tip right here. Um, there's other ideas. Let's say you want... Okay, so that, that kind of covers some top 40 radio. Let's say you you feel like no no I'm not selling out with um, any Eric Carl books. I love Juicy Juice. Seriously, I can't get enough. If you're not a top forty. Maybe folk music. We're just still today's guitar. If folk music is more your thing, I would get something with repetition. In this example, Five Little Monkeys. Because what's great is usually when you're a folk musician, you're really poor and playing in bars, and um, your audience is really drunk. And what you need to do is get them on a sing-along like a four-year-old because they're like 45 or 50. It's a Wednesday night. They've got, um, well, either they're unemployed or they have work the next day at a crappy nine-to-five they hate. And uh, they just need sing-alongs to to make them go to bed like a five-year-old while they're trying to pick up the uh, the other real nasty lady with the with the big hooters. Drinking the PBR two tables down. So, the way we achieve this is a nice, simple four chord structure as a starting point. Uh, Usually, you know, some of these chords are going to be, it's going to be a mix of major and minor, but usually you've got your usual suspects. You got a G. We're already out of tune, but. The nice thing is we're folk singers, so it kind of goes with our bohemian lifestyle right now, if we're playing along. Um, another popular one, E minor. It's a little brooding, you know, uh, major and minor. Major chords, happy. Minor chords, sad. E minor, compared to just a standard E or, you know, E major. Boom, boom. If I was in tune, you would understand that those are the same notes, but you have to take my word for it. Sad, happy. Never, I mean, fucking never leave out a C chord. That's in every effing song ever. I don't think there's a single exception in the world. You never leave out the C. Everyone wants C. Tell me you don't dream in that note right there. That starts and ends 99% of the world's songs and sentences. Hitler probably started with a C, but so did Gandhi. So call me racist now. E. We've already gone over. Let's go back to wanting the D. But let's play it better. That's a D right there. It's been a minute. A minor. That's a good one. A minor's fun because it works going well to C. Look at my finger. Boom. Wait, one. Boom. One. Just one finger difference. Tell me that doesn't sound like you're about to tell a story. Already. And then think if you finish it up with G. What you're doing, you're kind of boom. You're you're setting up this tension with that A minor and that C. Like, 
Is he gonna? I don't know. He's telling me something. But is he gonna finish it? It's a new thought. But what do I think? G tells me that it's resolute. G tells me that it's gonna be okay. And C starts it over. A minor reminds me I'm not sure. C means I didn't finish what I was saying. A minor says the same thing. Then I'm gonna go to... What am I gonna go to? Nah, he's not what we're gonna, what we're gonna go do. D tells me that I needed to stop and think about it a second. But instead I'll go back to where I was. C. A minor. I didn't finish saying it. Here it is again. One more time. But we have to be even, so we do it one more time. Now let's resolve it with a C. We just resolve it with a C. I mean, G is what we actually resolved it with, and then back to a C. Now we're gonna switch it up. Go back to the D. Always need the D. Give me the D. Do I want the D? Now that I said it, I'm not sure that I want the D. I don't even want the D, but I'm resolved to this song. I'm resolved to this song. Now here's a fun one right here. It's kind of a combination of <coughs> C and G. But I'm not smart enough to know what it's called. I'm not smart enough to know what it's called. But it's good for the bridge. Cause it's similar enough that it keeps you hanging on until you go back and resolve it with a question back to the beginning with a question back to the beginning with a question oh we just switched it up with a D are you still even with me now in with G I'll let the music speak for itself This has been lesson one on how to cheat your way through making music and to sound awesome at the same time. And um, we didn't even get into Five Little Monkeys. Next time on DH Drum Twitch, creative. <laughs>